Welcome back to another recording of the Elevate Media Podcast. I'm your Chris. Oh, let me do that again. Welcome back to another recording of the Elevate Media Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Anderson, and uh, excited to have Gabe O'Neill on the show today. We're going to dive into something you might have not have heard of completely, business cards, but digitally. And so it's a cool new upcoming thing in the world of business cards and networking that Gabe is the forefront of. They do call him the godfather for a reason. And so I'm excited just to talk about his journey, things he's overcome in his journey to to build this business with his digital business cards and how we can utilize these in our everyday entrepreneurship journey as well. So Gabe, welcome to the Elevate Media Podcast. Hey, Chris, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So I got to ask, how did you get the nickname The Godfather? No, it's funny where... And it happened as a result of the digital card for some, somehow. But when we started this journey, it was never that I decided that I wanted to go in business selling digital cards. It was more like I was a software developer and needed more work. So and networking is, was the way that I would get it. Since we moved to one, from one place to another here in the Atlanta area, I lost all my networking buddies. So I had to start all over again. I said, oh man, it takes forever to, to get, build a base of people that you can that know and trust you. So mm-hmm. I wanted to expedite that process. So I figured, how do I, how do I expedite that process? How do I make that go faster and smoother? So I figured, well, what if I built them something? I'm a software developer. I built things all my whole career. So what if I spent a few hours, built them something, and then just give it to them without asking anything in return? Uh, that way they get to see my creativity, my work ethic. That way they get to see that I follow through on what I say I'm going to do, which is a very important thing for me. And so we started doing that when people stood, I, I stood up and said, Hey, anybody want a free card? See me at the end of the, of the meeting. And so instead of that awkward silence when everybody's talking to everybody else, cause they know each other, they all lined up to get one. So that kind of started And somewhere in, in that group, some, somebody started calling me the godfather of the digital card. <laughs> and, and at first I said, no, nah, I don't want to be associated with a you know, horse's head and all this other stuff. But they kept pushing it. They kept pushing it. And it was funny. And they, and then I would say, take, take the cannoli, take the digital business card, leave the gun. I would just make up stuff like that. And it just kept going further. People really liked it. So now now it's just really funny where people say, be my friend, Godfather. If I'm always getting movie quotes. And it's, it's just an, it's, it's branding, right? It's just another way of getting, getting your name out there. And people say, when people are in a conversation and they talk about digital business cards, they say, well, you've got to meet the Godfather. Because whatever you're doing is no good. So it worked, actually. That's awesome. And it's, it does. It's an important thing is that personal brand or branding and how you've been able to run with that as the godfather now of digital business cards and really play into that. I think that's a hard thing. And something we're still looking at with Elevate is our, our brand image. And then my personal as a, the head of it is getting that kind of rhythm and getting that where people just think of us and, and think of me in certain ways. And so... Why do you think if you wouldn't have got that nickname, do you think your growth possibly could have been slower? Did that really help you get solidified in the industry? It's hard to say that. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is because the product itself is, once you see it, it's people have a visceral reaction to it. But at the same time, I think it just made me more comfortable in my seat as I speak about it because I'll, I'm, I'm very, I'll lead with that. And, and I think it's fun with it. And I'll say cannolis are on me. We even have a package where a package called the Godfather, where if you buy, if you get that, you get a 12 pack of cannolis from, from Carlos Bakery, the guy was the cake boss guy. And it's fun. My, my one client that my one recent client that bought that package, I said, I know you're like health and your whole thing is health and wellness. And I said, I know you're really into health. I don't know if you want me to send you those things, the, the cannolis. And, and she said, we're in the middle of a cleanse right now. So we're not allowed to eat anything between now and, and two months from now. And I said, all right, I'll save it or send it to a friend if you like. Then she told her husband and her <laughs> husband said, who's also doing the cleanse. He said, no, you, tell him to send the cannolis. I want them. Oh, absolutely. That's cool. And that's in the, again, just playing off of that brand mm-hmm. uh, that you've built through it. And how can people, so like transitioning into the digital business cards, how can these play a crucial piece with someone's personal brand or even their business's brand to solidify that and grow that. It's interesting because again, when we started it, we just started it as a vehicle to get to know people. But we, I did, I gave those things away for a year and I had that whole, that whole list of people that were giving me 
feedback and wanting this feature and that feature. And then we added the texting and we added videos and we added all this stuff. So it really became a powerful thing on its own. And this is well before the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So the pandemic, the pandemic triggered a lot of other digital cards that are out there. And basically I can lump them into two categories. One, you can, one is a kind of a, a tap card where you can tap the a card on somebody's phone. And if you're lucky, it'll, it will send your information to their phone, but you don't get any of your information back. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other one that, that you can give out an obscure URL to, to that. And they're all basically cookie cut and they're all, they're, they're trying to fit your brand into theirs, right? As opposed yeah. to ours, we create ours custom from scratch, which means that we're totally showcasing your brand. Knowing how important branding is to me, I know how important it is to my customers. They don't want to see my branding on their card. And so they, they want to see their branding, their colors, their style, their images, their everything. So that's the one thing where we differentiated ourselves, where we're creating something unique to them. And when they share that, they're going to share that more because they're more proud of it. Yeah. And when they share that more, they're going to get more business from it. Because the other thing that's different from ours is the delivery method. As you can see above me, you can either, t you can text the word Gabe to that number, to the 321 number. Basically, you just create a new text where you normally put the number of the person you're texting. You put the three two one four two one five two one three, and then and you just it, the message is simply the word Gabe, my keyword. And when you, you you do that, you get when you hit send, you get my card in return to your check to your in the text a, a link to it. And if you do the QR code, it'll actually generate the text necessary. So it basically does the, the text for you. And the interesting thing about that is. Once people text us, we capture that cell phone number. Mm -hmm. So we have a whole nother area of our software, the back end, where we can communicate with folks and, and just because they, and they initiated the contact through the texting and the other cards just don't have that ability to do yeah. that. So we've, our core focus is figuring out a way that our digital cards can bring you business. And we have several different ways. We even get the community together, the community of card owners. We have events for them. And they're very eager to work with each other because they all have that in common, that they all have taken that step of buying a card that's very unique to people. So it's really cool. Yeah. So how long have you been building this business with your digital business cards? The whole thing where we moved, it was in 15, I think. Okay. It was towards the end of the year in 2018. So that's when I started giving them away. Around about a year from there, towards it was interesting. It's a good lesson in entrepreneurship because <laughs> that whole time I was thinking, oh yeah, people, people are saying, oh, they love your card. Yeah, oh, they love it, but nobody really buy one. Nobody really pay for one. <laughs> and then one of my buddies, it was an, um, a mortgage guy, one of his guys in the office wanted one. He said, that's really cool. I want one too. And so I said, well, he doesn't come to this networking group and I don't even know him. So, so I guess I got to charge him something. So I don't know. I'll charge him on whatever it was, a hundred bucks or something. And I said, okay, so maybe people are buying them, but it'll never, it'll never be enough that, that I'll be able to make a business out of it. And the, what, what are those? Those are called self-limiting beliefs. Yeah. And it's something that, that one day I just realized, I said, wait a minute, who's stopping this from being a business? It's me. Cause I have, I even told somebody, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing these digital cards. And, and I actually bad mouthed my own business to this guy because I said, Nobody's going to buy him, not enough money and all this stuff. He said, that doesn't sound like a very good business. And it was really funny. Very shortly after that, I'm saying, wait a minute, who's limiting this thing? Is it other people or is it me? And it's me, totally. So the second that I pulled off those, that pulled away that glass ceiling, things started happening for me. So that's awesome. Um, I realized, I said, wait a minute, if we sell these to teams, you know, that you can, you, if I get into a company, and I sell 20, 30, 50, 100 cards. That can be a really significant thing. And imagine that because it's not just window dressing. These things really boost the, the, the bottom line of people who have them. I've got an incredible ROI from my clients, 2X, 5X, 25X return on the investment because of all the things that it does to get them business. So that was 2019. I said, let me go ahead and do this. So I, so that's what I did. I converted over and went fully into just building the best bit digital card that's out there. I can do all this digital marketing. I'm a software guy. I've been technical for many years and I decided, no, I'm not going to do this. 
oh, I can do your website, I can do your SEO, I can do all this stuff. <laughs> no, I'm going to build the best digital card that's out there. So that was in the fall of 2019, and it started going pretty well. Okay. And then Christmas time, there's always a lull. Right. January, February, great, really good. March of 2020, good for the first two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> we right. all remember. We all know what date it was. Yeah, when the pandemic hit. Yeah, especially those of us who are, who are entrepreneurs in business. And so I thought, oh man, I'm dead because we have these these lanyards that, that take these out in networking in, in in person networking, and the people see it. Oh, what's that? It's my digital card. I can get them to scan the QR code and all that. So that was my day. I would be taking me and my lanyard out to in-person events three, four, five, six times a week. And, and, and so I th guess what? That's all stopped indefinitely, permanently. Who knows? Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, now what am I going to do? That's the second lesson I learned, which really showcased it. It's not instead of saying, oh, why me? This thing was doing so good. Why, am I, why do I have all this bad luck? These are things that happen to entrepreneurs. They happen, wow. yeah, it happened to a lot of people. And the people who said, oh man, I guess I'm dead or the people who gave up or the people that went out of business. Yeah. But there was no real reason to do that. If you can figure out a way to pivot and do something different. And what I did was I found these online, these online meeting networking groups and I just took it from there. And so now instead of selling just locally, I'm selling them all over the country. So it's been, and it's just been strictly going to virtual meetings almost six, seven times a week just getting them out there. And that, that's a huge part of it. And thank you for sharing the story and your journey and the, and the kind of synopsis of it. And the first thing that I want people to hear is successful entrepreneurs, they aren't some magical, crazy, superhuman individuals like Gabe. They struggle with self-limiting beliefs. They struggle mm -hmm. with things coming up that they have to pivot in. We've all been there on our journeys. We're all at different levels, but we've all been through this so if you're in your journey right now and you're like, oh, yeah, Gabe, that's great. You did, you're doing this fantastic thing. I, I don't believe in myself or I had this happen, but look, Gabe has too. So you can take that with hopefully some courage and confidence saying, oh, if Gabe did it, okay, maybe there is hope for me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to really turn it around. You yeah. got to turn around in your own head. It's obviously the mindset has, has a lot. And in, that's where I was going to ask was how did you, you realize you were the limit, the glass ceiling on the endeavor. So how did you go about flipping that script in your own mind to get over those limiting beliefs. It, again, it's just by sheer determination. The one thing that I've always had in me is that I've never give up. I have a daughter that, that I am, I am, we, in, in 2014, 15, I was doing great in my career all the way up until then. And then we had a hit uh, happen where we got downsized and with no parachute at all. So basically thrown out of the plane without a parachute. And so we had some rough times there, but I really wanted to show my daughter that no matter what, I was not going to give up. I was not going to, I was going to just keep, no matter how many times you get knocked down, you just keep doing it. So that was in me and just having that in me and then realizing sometimes all you need to do is realize something. And then all of a sudden you've got the energy to push forward again and again. And so that was one. And another thing, actually a, a gentleman who actually does this kind of coaching for a living we had a conversation and one of the things that he helped me to realize was I was wearing this coat. You can think of it that way, wearing a coat, whether it be of depression or anxiety or frustration. If you're wearing that all the time, people can see that. Yeah. And there's no real reason to have that on. You can take that coat off. And I literally took that coat off and I just discarded it. And even though the ch my situation hadn't changed right at that time, uh, my mindset did. And then that really helped bo boost things. So there's just so many things. And the third thing I'll mention is that I I've met this gentleman who is a sales, he's a sales director of, of a company with like a hundred salespeople. And he really likes the card. He said, I'm going to sell it to my guys. I'm, and I'm going to get, I'm going to get guys from within my company to help sell it. And that's really what I've been looking for connections like that. And I thought, why did I get that guy? And I think sometimes you just have to be still standing. That, that's the other thing is if, if you're still there, when those, if I had quit, like wherever I had all kinds of opportunities to quit, but again, knowing me, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. But if you're still standing, you just know when that, never know when that opportunity is going to come by. So I just yeah. found that kind of stuff pretty fascinating, actually. 
Yeah. And it's funny you say that. And it's because you hear all the time, successful entrepreneurs, like people I like who I look up to, it's a little bit of luck. It's hard work, it's consistency, but it's also a little bit of luck. And I think right there, you encapsulated that of putting in the work, not giving up, just sticking with it, getting out there and putting in the reps. But then you met a guy who really opened things up and then you could say it has a little bit of luck or right place, right time kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But like you said, if you would have given up, that wouldn't happen. And so mm -hmm. that's why I think so many people, they give up too soon. They're one step away from meeting that, that salesperson with that team that can really take their business in, to the next level. But you've got to go through that pain and you got to go through those rough moments to be able to get to those quote unquote lucky, lucky breaks. Right. And you, you hear so many stories like that, like mm -hmm. uh, the Harry Potter author. Yeah. Harry. They're rolling. Yeah. Yeah. She, how many times was she turned down? Like 200 times or something like that. Something crazy. Yeah. yeah something, some really uh, nutty thing. So you just never know. And it, it's sometimes it's hard because maybe like you, you watch Shark Tank and they say that that's a dog I take out in the back and shoot it. So they're <laughs> encouraging you, yeah. they're encouraging pe some people to give up. And it's so it's, it's sometimes maybe they're right. But again, I just think that if it's not working, then maybe try and pivot some way. If it's definitely not working, then maybe not shoot it, but just change it a little bit and, yeah. and keep working that way. So, And I think that's a great point, too, because sometimes we can have really great ideas in our own minds. And from our perspective, it's, yes, this is going to be the next big thing. This is going to work. What you mentioned is you had coaches, but like Shark Tank, those are mentors. If you can't get in front of somebody and get honest feedback, or at least be humble enough to get honest feedback or ask for it, you could be barking up the wrong tree. You could have the right mindset and the right determination. But if it truly is a terrible idea or not a good business structure, whatever it is, but you can't get that valuable feedback or you're not willing to, then yeah, mm -hmm. you could just be spinning your wheels for a long time. Right. Absolutely. So how important is that to you right now? Do you still have mentors and coaches that you go to? It's not, I network a lot and I, mm -hmm. so I have people that even my clients, that's the other thing is mm -hmm. when we will get together twice a month, anybody that not only my clients, but anybody, the public's invited, where it's basically half networking and half discussing of, of trends, of, of things that are working for people basically just helping each other. And uh, so I'm always, you always have to be willing to learn. That's another thing that no matter, no matter how, for me, obviously, I always have to keep up with stuff and try and come up with new things, but always willing to learn. And just, again, there's a lot of other people that have had different ways to get to where they're going. And, and there's no way you can know, know everything, especially today. It's just so crazy. And so I'm always trying to, not only trying to learn from others, but a, a, a venue where other people can all contribute and also learn from people to, to make themselves better. So yeah, it's always good to have people that you can count on. Yeah. And so with these digital business cards, people are now going to events again. They're getting back out there. This is, I think now we're in like the mix of mm -hmm. where we were before the pandemic and then what caused us to, to adapt and shift from the pandemic. So I think they're meshing together now. And so these digital business cards, they're still an asset to have for sure versus just that old paper business card. Mm -hmm. Do you see a place for the old business card, the paper printed one? No, I, I don't. I used to have fun designing them and mm -hmm. I would be, be real proud of them. But basically they, my card would be in this. I used to have a pile of cards on my desk that was just that eventually when I got big enough, I throw, I just throw them away. And, and, and that's what people do. I even have a meme that I came up with where a lady's handing another lady a card and asking her, excuse me, will you throw this away for me? So that's basically what you're asking them to do. But, but with the digital cards, and I'm glad you mentioned that, that the, the hybrid of, of virtual versus in-person and, and trade shows and all this other stuff, I, I haven't bought cards in years. I, I only use my digital card. Because the other thing, it can be saved right on their phone. If they're not going to, they're not going to text it or they're not going to scan the QR code unless they're somewhat interested in what I'm doing. So that's the other right. thing. You're also, you're also qualifying them. Yeah. By, I'm like, just going to say, oh yeah, give me your card. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So you're qualifying them. Plus you have their information that you can text them back and you can get back to them. And plus, again, with the hybrid of virtual versus in person, where, where our card shines is that. It's easy to share it online by doing any one of those things up here. In person, I've got my lanyard. I can, and I've got my QR code right on my phone. 
I just bring it right up. Where is it here? So I, all I have to do is I have it up with me at all times so I can do this in person. Mm. And so they just scan it that way. And, and, and you can't do that with other cards and, and the other, no matter how they, any way that they, that I share it, I'm going to get their information too. Those yeah. tap cards, if they don't work on all phones, I believe they don't even work on Androids. If you, in any of those, you can, you can't get their information. Plus the other thing that's neat about ours is, is if I get people to remember my keyword and my number and the number is three, two, one, four, two, one, five, two, one, three for all my clients. So that's, so that's again, three, two, one, four, two, one, five, two, one, three. It's got a, a really cool cadence to it. If I get people to remember that, and a lot of my clients know it, that's how they give out my card. So I, I don't even have to be the one to distribute it. I can arm people with as many digital cards of mine as they, they need. And that's the other thing that's very powerful because that's how our clients make, get a lot of business through um, just referrals that way. It just makes it really simple because they get the card. My schedule is right on my card. It's really easy to get on your schedule. Once you're making it so easy for people to contact you, you're going to get more people to contact you. That's how it works. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that's one piece right there that you're, you mentioned within that is one, it, it gets those people that aren't truly interested out of the way. And those who are actually wanting to connect because they're actually going to get that information, but that you collect their information as well. So you can reach, uh, reach back out to them. You can connect with them right from your phone, right? Because those numbers go. Oh, yeah. Up yeah. So we can text them back because that's a perfect example. You can be in a, a meeting and have a great conversation with everybody's done this at a networking meeting, have a great conversation with somebody. Oh, that, this could really turn into business. And then with the old paper card method, you're calling them and you're, you don't know what they're, if the email's getting there, you don't know, right. you don't know what's happening with their phone. And, and they had, had every intention of calling you back. They had every intention of working with you, but they got home and their kid had to go to the hospital for this. And then or their other kid got in trouble in school and all of these squirrels that are affecting their lives has just dragged that out. Now a week and two has passed and it, now you're not so much in their memory. But if you could have texted them back during that week and said, hey, remember that conversation? Would you like to get, oh yeah, let's, there's a button. All I have to do is push that button. I'm on your calendar. And so. It just, it works. It just mm -hmm. simply works. Yeah. So with that, and this is just my curiosity, when they sign up or they go to your business card page, does their information goes into your phone or into a CRM externally? It doesn't. When they text me back, it mm -hmm. comes to our CRM. That's an interesting thought. If I could, I could probably create a VCF file pretty fairly easily and just have it brought into my phone. I hadn't even thought of that one. That'd be interesting if they sign up with their contact information, if it creates that contact card in your phone, so then it's, oh, I want to call Joe. I want to call Jan, whatever it was I just connected with or send her like mm -hmm. a personal text instead of right. doing it through the CRM text thing. I mm -hmm. didn't know if that was possible. It's, yeah, it's interesting. I think the, the actual CRM, it's really simple to use. And I find it, I would rather actually use a CRM because it's got everybody listed there mm -hmm. and I can segregate them. I can put them in folders. Okay, this is where I met them at this conference or I met them at this networking group or whatever, and I can, I can mass email, text them all, mm -hmm. which I only do, I, which I, I do very sparingly because this isn't about spamming people. It's about just doing it very carefully. And I can, and when they get my card, they re, they can text me back right there. And that comes into it as well. So you can have conversations and anytime that happens, I get flagged to my phone saying, oh, you've got a message to look at. And it's, really simple to bring it up. Yeah. I really do using the CRM. It's really simple to use, but it's an interesting thought to try and see if I can convert them to go back into my phone. I'm not, yeah. I'll have to think about that one to see. How, yeah. It was just, a, yeah. yeah, just a thought I had for yeah. sure. So if, so rounding out the episode, Gabe, I'm interested if people are going out, they're networking in person, they've got a old school business card or they've got your digital business card. What would three things you would recommend them to improve their networking, improve their actual connection with people, regardless of the means of trading information at the end, what would be three things that you would recommend people to do to improve their networking? Obviously be out there. You can't get any results. Sometimes you're like, oh man, I don't want to do that. I've been to this group before. I hasn't really done anything for me, but there's always that one time when that one person is going to be there. Sometimes yeah. I've had clients that attended one meeting and did not join the group and they bought my card because yep. I was there. So that's one. For two, it's not about just selling. You've got, you can really turn people off if 
because that's not one, that's not something I try and do. I don't really push the product on anybody because I want the clients that see it and that say, oh yeah, this is cool. I want it because they're going to be the best people to refer me anyway. But it's about building relationships. It's really about just building relationships and be consistent. Get, be, get it out there. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Again, it's about you standing there when that opportunity comes around. So yeah, I would say that those would be the three things that I would all. recommend. Those, yeah, those are great things. And if you're listening to this, yeah, you've got to take those in consideration. Start implementing all of those. And then really consider looking at this digital business card, something that Gabe and I have talked in the past, obviously, uh, about. And then I wanted to bring him on the show that we're considering just that we're now getting into more events. And so I'm excited to route with Gabe as well. But whatever it looks like, make sure you're getting out there. Make sure you're at least connecting and connecting somehow with information because your network is your net worth. And you've got to continue to grow that to scale what you're doing. And like Gabe said, you never know when you might meet that one person that can really just blow up your business in a good way. Gabe, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much again for being on the Elevate Media Podcast. As we round things out, where can people go? And I know what you're going to say, which is great, but where can people go or get connected with you to learn more? There, scan the QR code, text the word Gabe to 321-421-523. That's the best way you get to experience it. And the other thing is that this is how I become memorable to people. When they get my card, they see it's very different. Mm -hmm. I even had, a, I even had a, a situation where a guy I met, this was before the pandemic, but uh, the guys, we were in a networking group and the guy says, hi, Gabe. And I said, hello, person. I, I'm sorry. I, I apologize, but I don't know your name. And he said, it's Jermaine. And I said, oh, Jermaine. I remember that name from a while ago. It's because it's very unusual. Huh. I said, when did we meet? And he said, oh, it was in fe February. That was six months ago. I said, Jermaine, how in God's name could you remember me? I know every, we all network a lot. How could you remember me from that long? He said, well, you have that digital card, don't you? And so it, it's, again, it's about being memorable. So yeah, if you get that, the card, you go ahead and, and get it. And, and my, it's really easy. My, my calendar's right on there. So I'd be happy to share anything that I, that I like. To, obviously, you can tell I like talking about it. Yeah, it's awesome. Make sure everybody check that out. Text that number to get connected and, and look at it really it is, it's it's a really cool once when i first did it like it got my attention and it just how it looks and it's present presentation and mm -hmm. what's able to be done there so it's a really cool thing of course i'm not sponsored gabe's not sponsoring this episode or anything i just it's truly a neat experience when you open up that digital business card Thanks. and that's it's yeah really absolutely so make sure you guys get connected with gabe and if someone out there is trying to network or someone who's trying to build their business and need some help networking share this episode with them uh, we love to help more people together. But until next time, go out there, continue to elevate your life, elevate your brand, and we'll talk to you next time. See ya. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.